This episode of Animal Watch is sponsored by Bai Benji Dog Biltong, the high value air cured dog treat. Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're meeting the mystical Peruvian hairless dog. Ancient, mystical and revered, the Peruvian hairless is perhaps one of the most esoteric dogs of the world. Its absolute origins are unclear, but is known to be hundreds if not thousands of years old, as its image can be found on pottery and art dating back before the Incas in Peru. The breed most probably contains ancient dog DNA, from when the first dogs walked over the land bridge to the Americas over 4,500 years ago. These dogs certainly looked like they were one of the first original dog breeds to have walked the planet. Discovered by the New World in the 1500s by invading Spanish forces, who were responsible for almost wiping out the entire breed, these dogs were often found wandering inside caves filled with orchid flowers, which led to their name as the Flower Dog, or Peruvian Inca Orchid. The Incas prohibited the eating of these dogs in their society, as they were considered to be so precious, so much that they were adorned with jewellery and buried with their owners. Not the same as the Mexican Zolo, but looking very similar, the Peruvian Inca Orchid has developed wholly independently. One thing is certain, from almost total extinction, these dogs have rebounded with so much popularity that despite being rare in Europe, they are now one of the most highly sought after breed in Peru, a real deserved comeback. Today, I'm meeting the proud owners of one of the only Peruvian hairless in the UK, Gary Henderson and his wife, Helena. I can't wait. Hi, Gary, lovely to meet and you. you. And who is this? This is Seamus, he's the Peruvian hairless dog. Wow, look at him. He's really interested in your ball. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, look at you. Look at you, he's like, I'm not interested, I want the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Hey, can I say hi? I want to say hi, you're quite big because you often see the very small ones so it's really interesting isn't it to see one yeah, that, yeah. that is so huge and I've never seen a colour like this before. He's certainly very very rare. He is very rare. This is their favourite field that the boys like to come and have a, a run around in um, so we're going to have a let him off and run around with his little brother Danny. Excellent, fantastic, let's go and do it. Hello, you're so beautiful. Look at your yellow eyes. Wow, look at you. After fun in the park, we returned to the house to find out everything there was to know about keeping a Peruvian hairless. First of all, obedience. Rest. Seamus is a very, very clever and responsive dog, showing that this breed is, is very, very easy to train. So you're going to show me some of the tricks that oh, you absolutely. have taught he would, him to do. He would love that. <laughs> he's desperate. Uh, that's, one of, that's one of them. Yeah, he's desperate for these by Benjis, isn't he? For goodness me. So what's this one? What's the command for this? This is a pause up. Pause up. Seamus, pause off. Ready, set, wait. Pause up. <laughs> he almost jumped off Good the ground. Boy. Seamus? Pause up. Good boy. This is a good boy. Oh, oh you nice have got one. That beat. Middle. Eight. Eight. Good boy. Sit. Good lad. Jump. <laughs> good lad. 
Now, I was told that Seamus was a budding star at agility, so I was given front row seat to watch our flower dog's talents. In. Go on. In. Go on. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. And finally, I needed to know how to care for Seamus' skin. So Helena explained to me what was needed to be done to protect and keep him safe. We're going to attempt to um, rub some moisturiser on uh, Seamus so you can see his skincare regime. Now, of course, we could be exfoliating him, but he needs to be in the bath for that. So right now we're just going to put the oil on. So Helena, what have we got here? Jojoba oil. Yeah, it's very good because it doesn't clog the pores. Yeah, and it's very natural, isn't yeah, it? So, yeah, so will he, love, will he enjoy this when you do uh, it? Yeah, so it's kind of like massage, so he doesn't mind it very much. Yeah. It depends on his mood, but generally he's quite <laughs> happy about it. <laughs> yeah, he loves his ears massaged. So if you don't do this, will he get quite wrink you know, dried and flaky? He get, yeah, he does get quite dry. Yeah, so it's keen to, to keep it in good condition. You, you have to moisturise quite often. And if it, if it gets really dry, will it crack and sort of bleed? If you, no, no, we never let it you uh, never get go it. that far. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess if somebody wasn't looking I'll after a dog so, like this, yeah. it yeah, would. Definitely. So Seamus, how do you like your doggy daycare spa? Hmm? He says yes, it's pretty good. Gary, he's absolutely beautiful. And Seamus, what an unusual name <laughs> for a Peruvian <laughs> hairless. Why on earth Seamus? We just liked the name. We wanted to get a, a dog, we wanted a Peruvian, and we couldn't think of a name. And between us, we just kind of liked Seamus. We got another dog and it seemed to fit. In the United Kingdom, they're they incredibly rare. So Seamus, is he one of a kind? Or do you know if there are any others of his size? As far as we are aware, and um, we've done as much research as we can, he's the only one in the country at the moment. Yeah, and of course, they're very, very popular in Peru where they come from, where they're, oh, they're the national dog, aren't they? They are, they're, they're Peru's national treasure. His eyes, they're like bright yellow amber. They look absolutely unbelievable against this really unusual sort of, what is he like, a milk chocolate brown you can sort <laughs> yeah. of? This is copper. Copper, this is, mm. so it is actually copper. And now these dogs are called hairless, yes. but are all of them hairless? Uh, no, you get the same with the, the with the Mexican hairlesses. You get the completely um, naked dogs, and you get hairy ones as well. And do you get some that sort of half half? Oh, little... you get some that got like a they like got a little toupee on. <laughs> He's the the large size um, in Britain. We would call him a standard. A standard size, right? And then you have the very very tiny, yep, and then what's the one in the middle? intermediate and so these ones to me are very very rare and of course if you look at all the pictures online and that of the statues that they collect from Peru yeah, yeah. then all the dogs you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago yes. still look exactly the same as this so yeah. the breed are, are very much unchanged aren't they yeah very much unchanged yeah they they're literally are exactly as they were um, thousands and thousands of years ago. They used the dogs as good omens as, as much as they used them for medicinal purposes as well because they believe that they had healing powers with eczema, skin conditions, stomach problems. They would lay the dog onto the patient, let the dog rest there for a little while and then um, the dog would get up and, and walk away and they believed that, that, <laughs> that they'd cured their stomach bug or their, or their eczema yeah. or their asthma. Now the thing that's, that I find the most different actually to the Zolo is the skin mm. because his skin's actually quite rough. The Zolo felt very soft. Mm. It's almost like a very fine grade sandpaper but not unpleasant to touch actually at all and I think he quite enjoys it doesn't he? He does yeah. Do you need to put him in um, big coats and jackets in the oh, winter to yeah. keep him so warm? They've got loads of clothes so winter time they've got rain max and then they've got the thicker ones like ski jackets, <laughs> jumpers in the summer they have t-shirts. We put sun cream on him if it's too hot. You can sort of imagine that he is a dog from another world mm. almost. The ears are so bat-like. The feet, they look like little bat feet and they're sort of like this and quite wrinkly but you know most dogs feet probably look like that yeah. don't they but we just don't ever get to see it. No and they're, they, they're, they're very webbed as well. Now tell me about his teeth because he's got a lovely set of white teeth, but I noticed that some of them are missing. Because of the hairless gene, it affects their teeth. So if he was uh, fully coated, he'd have a full set of teeth. 
Um, but with the mutation, with, with having no hair, it affects the teeth as well. How old is he? Uh, 17 months. 17 months old. Now, is he a type of dog that would naturally like people? We have to socialise him. They're very family orientated and they're very protective over their family. Not in a way that they would attack anyone, but they're very wary of people. So the more that they are around people, the better they are. But they're a, an amazing dog. They're super, super friendly. I don't think I've ever met a dog that's so loving. The second you walk out of a room and you come back in a room, it's like he's not seen you for weeks on end. It's yeah. just, gorgeous. He seems very sensitive. I get the feeling after meeting him that he's the sort of dog that would suffer greatly if he was told off. He absolutely adores the tickles and he's look he's like give me some more give me some more. So when you take him for a walk how does he act around other people's dogs? He's okay like a lot of dogs they've got dogs that they don't particularly like. In general he's fine. I think because of the way he looks you tend to get people that hold back a little bit because they're not quite sure which but once he gets to meet a dog he's fine he's quite happy to run around and a play i understand that these dogs are quite long lived too aren't they sort yeah. of 12 to 15, 15. yeah 12 that's to 15 actually years. very good mm. when you get the really ancient breeds they're just so healthy aren't they mm. and just naturally healthy because in nature the sick ones would have just died and back yeah. in those civilizations over thousands of years ago they probably didn't have the vet care that we have these days. Is he recognised here in the UK? They don't recognise the breed at the moment. And that's because there's so few of these dogs? Yeah, so few, yeah, so very rare. So there needs to be uh, at least 12 different breeding pairs in the country for the Kennel Club to consider recognising the breed. Well I hope very much to see many, many more in the United Kingdom because he's absolutely gorgeous and I'm going to pop a link up above if you'd like to have a look back at the Zolo and you can then sort of see the differences between the Zolo and the Peruvian hairless and if you liked this episode of Animal Watch then make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom of the screen and be sure to tune in every single week when we will be bringing you some more fabulous episodes on dogs, wolves, wildlife, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now.